I want to begin this morning with one minute of Bible study, you, just as a reminder. In the New Testament, Luke wrote two major sections. Luke wrote, obviously, the Gospel of Luke, and then the Acts of the Apostles. Gospel is all about what Jesus did when he was alive. Acts of the Apostles is what, how the Apostles acted after Jesus uh, arose and ascended to heaven. The Gospel you just heard from Luke is at the end of the Gospel of Luke. And in the Gospel, Luke says that Jesus rose on the day of the resurrection. After the resurrection, he came and appeared to his disciples, he had a meal with them, and then he went up into heaven. Well, in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Luke says it happened after Jesus rose from the dead, and then 40 days later, he ascended into heaven. Whenever you have sections in the Bible that don't harmonize, don't try to harmonize them. Always look for a deeper meaning. That's the key. So what is Luke perhaps trying to get us to think about? That this message of Christ, for all of us, for them then, and for us now, is an unfolding of the message of Christ. The readings talk about the opening of our minds to the message of Jesus. So it's never over. We like to think in terms of magic moments. We say, this day I was baptized. This day I was confirmed. This day I got married. This day I was ordained. That's, that didn't happen that way. Baptist, our baptism did not happen when on the day that somebody did a water ceremony over us. That began baptism. Baptism is a lifelong journey to God trying to form ourselves in the way of Jesus. Confirmation ceremony, the way that I think about it is that when the young people are confirmed, they're given the possibility of the Spirit within them. But it's only when they live it out that actually they are continuing to be confirmed. Those of you who are married, you know that. Marriage wasn't over the day you said vows. <laughs> that just began, right? Priesthood, I'm still working on it. So it's an ongoing process. Well, that's what this is about. That's what this handing on of the message is. And as I said earlier, a lot of you parents thinking about your children wonder, are they ever going to get it? And I've used examples before. Football, how many times they practice the start of the play where the center hands the ball up to the quarterback. But sometimes they still fumble. Relay races, passing the baton on. How much they practice, sometimes they still drop it. And that's what Jesus was thinking about with his disciples. Will they get the message? And that's what Jesus wonders about us today. Will we get the message? And I don't think there is a day when we got it. It's a continual growth process. That's why we're using the tree and our seven words and our new mission and vision statement. We're growing in the Lord. What kind of a disciple are we? I read an article this week in the days of stagecoach travel. Now, you think that's a personal experience, but it isn't. When I was young, Henry Ford had just invented the automobile. But in stagecoach travel, I read that there were three classes of passengers. First class, once you got on the stagecoach, you never had to get off until you got to your destiny. So if the stagecoach broke down or they got stuck in the mud or they couldn't get up a hill, you could still stay in the stagecoach. First class. Second class is that if the stagecoach got in trouble, you had to get off, but you didn't have to do anything. You could just sit on the side of the road and watch whether it was stuck or broken, you know, second class. Third class is if it got stuck or broke or couldn't get up the hill, you had to get off and help solve the problem. So, take a look in the mirror. Which class passenger are we on this stagecoach of the message of Jesus? If something happens in the church, 
Do we just stay on, on the stagecoach and wait for somebody else to do it? Or are we second class, where we get off and watch others do it? Or are we third class, where we get off and help? That's the challenge. Now, to do that, we have to do three things. First, we have to look outward, we have to look upward, and we have to look forward. First, looking outward, because it's human nature to just think about me and my wants and my desires and the way I think things should be done. And it, it's a, a challenge to, to push ourselves out. Think about Jesus. What was his main direction in life? It was always others. And we're the body of Christ. We're the presence of the Lord Jesus in the world today. So we have to continually almost force ourselves to look outward to the needs of others over our own needs. And then we have to look upward. And that means we look to the teachings of Christ, that more and more we seek to understand his real message. Because I, I wonder if we still get it, that we're not here just to get to heaven. We're here to transform the world, and that will get us to heaven. That's what Jesus was here for. And thirdly, we have to look forward. We have to look on the possibilities of what yet has not happened that we can help bring about. So as third-class citizens, third-class travelers, we get out, we're the hands, the mouth, the feet of Christ, and we help to bring the message into the world. Thank you for watching the homily on Easter Sunday here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in New Berlin. We invite you to join us any weekend for worship with us, or you can watch us on mystelizabeth.com or on Facebook. Happy Easter.